Kamar Joba, and welcome to Georgian Crossroads. This is Burn Power, and uh, I'm going to take you with me today on a kind of an unexpected Tbilisi episode. And what we're going to do is walk through the old section of Sololaki, which is just above the old town. I'll show it to you on a map in a moment. But uh, I find that people here come and often stay on the same triangle that goes kind of between the old town, uh, Liberty Square, uh, goes across the Peace Bridge, across the, uh, what they call a gondola or tramway, or they call it the ropeway here. And then they go see the Mother of Georgia statue, maybe walk past the Narikala Fortress, and then come back down through the Sulphur Bath. And that's the main triangle people stay on here. And what I want to do is get you off of that and tell you, okay, so you've got here. You've had to see those things. Now what do you do? Well, what you should do is just go straight back up um, past the old town, which is called Kala, and then go to Sololaki and just wander around Sololaki, especially if you have a camera. It's amazing what you'll see there. It isn't so much ruins as it is aesthetic decay. Uh, I'll explain more as we go, and I'm not going to really walk with you. Uh, I'm not like one of these people who drags a selfie around everywhere and such. Every now and then I, I will photograph myself in a location, but what I'm more interested in doing is just giving you a flavor for an area using both video and stills. So, without any further ado, let's go visit Sololaki. Come with me. First, let's see where Sololaki is on a map. So this is Sololaki, and Sololaki is a triangle, uh, not a triangle, uh, more of a, I would say it's a rectangle below Liberty Square. Liberty Square is in the top center there, uh, the Marriott building would be right there, and you would turn uh, right to go up uh, Leonidza Street, and Probably the best way through is to go to Iashvili Street and just start walking around anywhere in there. And Sololaki is kind of a ramshackle place. It's got a lot of really interesting buildings. It was seriously affected by an earthquake back in 2002. But the buildings have a kind of grace to them. You see a lot of these kind of overhanging verandas, uh, these balconies that hang out over the street. And I'm kind of in love with these. I really like the way they look and feel. But this is a typical street. And everywhere you look, there's usually a balcony uh, somewhere in the area. So keep your head up as you walk. Now, if you walk, look down this street, uh, not a particularly eventful street. If you look straight up, you'll see that kind of science fiction looking building. This is owned by the richest man in Georgia, uh, Bidzina Ivanishvili. I won't go into his role in Georgian politics, but it is complicated. And if you look off t to the side, there's kind of a globe in a, it looks like a globe in a jar up there. Very strange science fiction building which doesn't really blend with the rest of uh, the city, although there was an idea that the city planners had, I don't know if they still do, putting all these strange new buildings in the town. Uh, this was from the Saakashvili period. And it didn't really mix, but nevertheless, there is a really interesting blend of architecture. Now, when you're walking down a street, you might see a doorway that looks like this. And these doorways to me are really fascinating because they are, uh, what, what, what do you say? They're just inviting. Uh, what's going on in there? What's really interesting is all the scroll work and the, the serpentine patterns that you'll see. Uh, one of the things that Georgians seem to love are these vine-like patterns that show up in local architecture quite often. So my suggestion is go for a walk and just start poking your head inside of different uh, buildings. Although like this, it doesn't look inviting at all. Does anyone live there? Well, the answer is yes. Of course someone lives there. Uh, you can see that the, the door going down below looks a little more restored, but 
when you get up close to some of these doors, you really see some interesting artwork. I love this stuff. Uh, it, I mean, and you see this all over wherever there are older buildings in town. Even some of the Soviet-era buildings, they've incorporated these structures, and occasionally with the post-Soviet-era buildings. So look, this is a closer look at that doorway we were looking at earlier, and look at all the detail in it. <laughs> Just absolutely amazing. And here you can see, yes, there are actually stairs that go up into that building. Actually, this is a different building. And this the door looks similar, but step in. When you go into a building, you might find something like this. This place has been like this for about four years. Uh, amazing stairway, and you look straight up at the ceiling, and what do you see? These amazing patterns. Now, Art Nouveau had a big influence on Georgian aesthetics. I think the reason it did is because Art Nouveau emphasizes floral patterns. And much Georgian aesthetics comes from grapevines and other vine-like plants. Uh, grapevines go back in Georgia as far as we know that there have ever been Georgians. So you see these kind of vine motifs everywhere. I love looking out. Uh, this is going in that building, but looking out through the grill work. This is actually the doorway I was showing you earlier. But again, you look, I just think it's amazing, even the dis the decay. Uh, I've used the term aesthetic decay, and it really does apply. I hope this never this part of town never gets fully scrubbed. Uh, you know, uh, yeah, you could repaint this door, but my goodness, what interesting textures. Walking along the street, you come to some old building like this, which was obviously palatial in its day. Uh, one thing you will see is cracks in the buildings. I'll point those out more, but... This is another building near where a friend of mine, uh, Vlad, lives. And look at some of the uh, the pedestals and the, the gargoyles on the sides of the buildings. Just absolutely beautiful work. Again, very much uh, kind of a Georgian version of Art Nouveau. As you walk around, look up. And look at the details on some of these buildings. They're absolutely fascinating. And the details will be mixed with all sorts of things. Now here's a great example. There's a couple of these little like gargoyle creatures on the side of a building. They've been somewhat you know, beaten up by time. Nevertheless, they remain kind of a haunting presence. And I would get photos of these things because you never know when some ruthless city planner is going to decide to restore them. Meanwhile, there are other parts of Sololaki that kind of look like this. Notice the cracks. You're going to see, if you pay attention to this, uh, the images I've captured here for you, you're going to see a lot of cracks in a lot of buildings. All of this is from the 2002 earthquake. This is a, a nice street further up near the back of the camp. It's a valley. Sololaki is a valley. And when you go up near the back, there's a great walk behind kind of everything and uh, a lot of old brick walls. Uh, again, the grill work. Uh, the grill work there isn't particularly great, but it still has that sense of Georgian uh, twisted complexity, shall we call it. Again, just a, a, a random house. Um, here's kind of Art Nouveau mixed with classicism, uh, and I think all these, th all these things came together. Notice the, uh, the crack there. Why haven't the cracks been fixed? Long story, uh, the country was in poverty and coming out of, but not fully out of, a uh, period of warfare at the time. So these things kind of all hit at the same time. But for me, this kind of preserved a sense of uh, post-Soviet crumbling uh, beauty, really, that kind of got fixed in a lot of places, uh, like the Czech Republic now feels a little too clean, whereas this feels like, I don't know, it's a very homey sort of feel, and of course you're being watched everywhere by cats. This was a building I found quite interesting in its different parts. 
Uh, I really like the gargoyles on the edges uh, up at the top there. These little portraits of women, often women, very beautiful uh, portraits. Gargoyles can be anything, really. And then, again, the floral framework. This is definitely was an amazing Art Nouveau home. This one I really hope someone fixes, because this one really should be preserved. And that's one of the big questions, is how to preserve some of these structures. There are buildings with much bigger cracks than the ones I've captured in this uh, photo essay of mine. And again, another random doorway. You're just walking along, you see, you can almost tell if it's got floral uh, patterns in the door. Walk in, and what's on the ground? Just a fascinating old pattern. And leads up to a stairs. Where does the stair go to? You look up, and what do you see? I love it. Again, this one, I, it would be nice to see some of these really cleaned up. Um, and this is not a particularly interesting street, but this is. So you're walking down, and you look, and you just see these. A lot of life in Tbilisi happens not on the streets, but in the courtyards when you enter. Now, one thing you should do, as I said, is walk into the building. So those, if those, the door is open, just walk in and look up. <laughs> look at this faded, crumbling beauty, this, this amazing thing on the ceiling, cracked from the earthquake, cracked from just apathy, really. People aren't keeping up with these things. These were made around the turn of the century. But now they are uh, kind of uh, shells of themselves. Nevertheless, even in the shells, these, these dark husks, there's, it's just so moody inside there. A big crack in the building. This is just looking straight up the wall of this particular fading beauty. Yeah, just walk through here randomly. There's still parts of Solo Locky I haven't gotten to yet, and who knows what there is to discover. But now, if you know me, you know I love texture. I've done a whole lecture on texture over on my Anadromous channel. That's part of the reason I love Georgia. Uh, some of the textures you find. This, I believe is probably, I'm, I want to say a Soviet-era building, but I'm probably mistaken. Uh, this building we tried to get into, uh, it was empty on the top floor. We did manage to get to that second floor, but we couldn't get up to the top. Here's another old Art Nouveau facade. I, I, you know, I don't like graffiti, but I kind of like that symbol they, they spray-painted there. <laughs> I don't know what it means. Texture, 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 this old fainted painting texture. Absolutely beautiful. And there are people who pay lots of money to see this kind of texture in an art gallery. And speaking of art, there's street art and graffiti. I have mixed emotions about the graffiti. I like the street art. And sometimes, this is a good area to see street art. This is obviously someone's commissioned street art, a nice uh, skeleton of a whale. And this was someone's commissioned uh, street art uh, for a sign, maybe I, let's see, what's this? Uh, I can't quite read it, but it's, uh, that was essentially looked like a beauty store or something like this. Hmm. Someone celebrating someone's birthday, maybe. I wish they hadn't defaced it, though. But that's the problem with street art. So what was this? Is this solo lucky pride? Or maybe not. <laughs> it's hard to say, because it's like defacing the building. But 
uh, that building probably needs a little extra work. This is uh, one of the wine places on one of the streets there. And so my recommendation, go for a stroll in Sololaki. Bring your camera. Uh, do it at different times of the day, uh, different days. See if you can find this. I, I guarantee you this will be a hard one for you to ever find. That's literally an outhouse that someone just built on the edge of their... <laughs> and this is another great street there. This one had some really nice street art that I featured in my um, video essay on street art. So uh, check that out. And maybe you'll find the most mysterious door in Solo Locky. And if you ever get in there, it's amazing. Well, thanks for coming along with me today. I appreciated that the fact that you took your time to stroll with me through the streets of uh, Tbilisi, the section called Solo Locky. And um, again... I will be bringing many more uh, architectural discoveries here in Georgia. Some of them you won't be able to get to. Some of them you can only dream of finding. But other ones will be very much easy for you to find. And so finally, let me give you my word for the day. It's Sakhli. Sakhli, it means basically a house. And we walked by many houses today. And I'm glad you had a chance to see some of the parts of Georgia that aren't necessarily on the tourist map. This is Burn for Georgian Crossroads. Throw a beat.